We're at Rathmurnam Castle today. Uh, it's a really, really interesting, long storied building. Um, it's been a castle for a really long time, so there's a lot of stuff that's happened to it. Um, and so we did the tour, the tour is amazing, really worth doing, as always, apparently. And there's just too much to cover, so hopefully we can make a small video that will make you interested in going here, because it's so worth it. Um, even just for the grants. So, uh, this is Rathbarnham Castle's kind of entrance room prior to the ballroom. So this is where you go before, like, just before you're being announced to go into the ball. Um, so that, you know, yeah, so whoever the Herald is going to be like, oh, this is... Joffrey Baratheon from House Baratheon. Um, and so there's actually quite a lot of interesting architecture and kind of symbolism in this room. Uh, in the roof, can you see the roof? Yes. So in the roof, there's kind of an awful lot of acorns and things, um, oak leaves and so on, because, you know, oak, power, ancientness, um, obviously a really popular thing for... Um, prosperous families to want to be compared to. Um, and then over the doorways there are fashions. Um, you can kind of see it. These are some just long sticks um, tied together with some rope. Um, and what those indicate are power and like testosterone generally. Um, a big part of it is kind of, I mean we know them now from fascism. Um, because they were really popular to Mussolini. Um, he really liked the idea of having a lot of strong sticks to hit people with for some reason, who knows. Um, but back in those days it was kind of, in, in the days that this castle was uh, in use, uh, it was much more of like a, you know, we hold together, we're, we're a strong family kind of a deal. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, that's what they went for these, in those days. This is the ballroom. That room back there is just where we came from. Um, maybe not the largest ballroom I've ever seen in my life, um, but pretty impressive. The paintings in particular are quite interesting. Interestingly about this painting here, um, of Lucy, the head is probably the only part actually painted by uh, the artist, the rest by his students, because he was an extremely prolific painter, painted an awful lot of paintings like that, and just kind of had a standard template, and then just filled in the, the important bit. Um, in here we have the, what's called the octagonal room, because it's got corners, eight of them. Um, this is actually in one of the old towers, uh, of the castle, so it was used for defence, um, and so it has a tower at each corner, um, though it hasn't been used for defence in at least a couple of years. Um, this room, probably used for people, for men, to rest and have a smoke or whatever during or after a ball. Um, the reason it's thought that it's a men's only room is because on the ceiling, there are very male military symbols. Um, basically, the ceiling is made of testosterone. Um, and so it was probably sort of, yeah, only men. So the ballroom, uh, this is just sort of the end window. And these are the columns. They are not made of stone. What I'm in now is probably uh, kind of the um, suite of the Man of the House. So through here is, through there is uh, his bedroom. Uh, sadly, we are not allowed to go in. Um, and here we've got actually some quite nice looking paintings of the place, um, of the castle. So here, of course, the castle. 
this a pond no longer exists. Uh, naturally, the, the sheep would actually have been there um, because you've got to do something to keep some grass short. Um, and this is what's called the Four Seasons Room, and it is pretty incredible. So each of the cherubs are a different season in theory. Let's see, I wonder if I can guess which one's which. That's gotta be winter. Oh. Oh. Not a clue. Another quite interesting part about this room, this lovely mirror here, paper mache. Actually a fact. This is um, one of the only pieces, if not the only piece of furniture that actually belongs to the Loftus family. Um, the rest they sold off uh, or brought with them to another estate because you can't just have one. Finally, this is the gilt room, which is called so because everything is made of gold. Um, the, the ceiling here is pretty incredible, to be honest. Uh, the scale of it is hard to get on camera. Um, so, in the circle here, these are all symbols of Greek gods. Um, for instance, this here is going to be Ares, God of War, and some of Mars, if you were more Roman than Greek. Um, that's what I would call Pan, but also known as. I remember Hermes. Um, that's oh the you know the rods, the medical one. Um, here's naturally the one about alcohol. Um, so really an incredible room. Lots of amazing decorations here. The ceiling actually the, the paint is 22 karat gold. Um, which is Frankly, amazing. The guilt room, in contrast to the um, octagonal room, was presumably where the women went. Um, they think this because the floorboards were taken up by the Jesuits who owned the place for about, uh, about 80 years in the 1900s, and um, they found lots of pins. So, for whatever reason, buttons, only male people had buttons. Women, pins. So, over time, pins will have fallen out and dropped to the floor and lost forever until the Jesuits pulled them up, found them all. So, that's why it is assumed that this is the women's room. Uh, it also kind of works symmetrically, so the octagonal room, the men's room, is kind of through that way. It's really difficult to show that on camera, um, but they're opposite corners of the ballroom. They really cared a lot about architecture um, when, this, when the interior of this house was put together. So two architects were actually drafted to do it. Uh, one who really cared a lot about Roman architecture and one who cared a lot about Greek architecture. Um, so when you walk through, you can actually see the different styles quite easily. Um, and one thing that's also really interesting is they loved symmetry. Symmetry was really important. So here we are in the ballroom, and so we have one door, two doors, three doors, four doors. But that door opens onto a wall. Doesn't actually work. There's nothing through there. Uh, it's just to make the room more symmetrical. One of the interesting things about this place the corner walls are at a really weird skew. Um, and that was essentially because as the building was used for defense, it was an easy way to get more of a view around the surroundings. Not quite sure if that's gonna come through on camera, but we'll see. We got our drone out for this. So this here is the castle, as you see it today. Um, obviously the surroundings is now what's known as Dublin. Um, but this is what it used to look like back in the day. And this is 
a sizable segment of all the land that Loftus has owned, but by far not all. So the castle here, this is a really difficult angle. So the castle. You can kind of see the four towers on, my, on each corner. So those are used for defense. And it might be easy to see the skew that they are at in order to get more visibility. Also, the reverb in this particular room is extremely strong. This gate here is known as the Gate of Eli. Uh, it's a triumphal gate. Um, it was built when, they, when the Loftuses rebought the castle. And it's the actual front entrance. And all the way back there is the castle itself. So you have to go a really long way to actually get to the front door, which is how you prove that you're rich. That was Rathranham Castle. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like we said at the start, really hard to get everything into a video. So do come down here and check it out if you can. Um, absolutely worth it. Also, they have a cafe. And a playground. If and a playground. you are a... Adult. Yeah. Nah. Or if you're a child, child actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What was your favourite part of it? Um, the mirror made out of paper mache. I suddenly yeah. have huge ambitions in my arts and crafts. <laughs> <laughs> mm. and my favourite part was... Uh, oh, the f there's two like fighting different architectures. One architect was like, yeah, I love Greek architecture. And the other architect was like, yeah, I love Roman architecture and you're crap. And uh, they had a big fight. And so there are two opposing architectures inside of the house, which is a really interesting thing to see. Yeah. Um, the, the Roman the, uh, the Stuart disliked the other guy so much that he gave a public speech um, or like a lecture talking about how crap the other guy's architecture style was and then wrote a book on it. So yeah. loving. So yeah, um, being an architect in that time was a little bit difficult. A uh, big thank you to our patrons, we really, really appreciate your support, um, such as Peter Clark, Jen Carey, Stefan and Erica, and Vernon and Renata Lang. Uh, we couldn't do this without you all, uh, so thank you so much.